viewers today i am going to speak uh, on films that have been made on theater of the margins and for this purpose i have chosen two films one happens to be uh, an ivory merchant production released in 1965 uh, shakespeare wala and the other one is a 2007 rituparna ghosh film the last year so let's begin our journey today the theater companies staging the bards plays i mean shakespeare's plays have had an uneven right in india especially if we consider the phase that saw india's transition from the colonial to the post colonial period in fact they had to bear the brunt of the nationalist movement 1916 onwards the year 1916 is important because it marked the third centenary of shakespeare's death that went almost unnoticed in india a definite change was noticed in 1964 another important juncture for shakespeare lovers as this year was the quarter centenary of shakespeare's birth to commemorate this special occasion collections of the bards plays were published there were exhibitions and theater performances all over india however what really stood out was the birth of varnakula decolonized shakespeare extricated from the shackles of the empire shakespeare was globalized by being localized kolkata saw the emergence of utpal dutt's shakespearean productions in bengali utpal dutt after having traveled in india with geoffrey kendall's shakespearean theater troupe in 1947 set up his little theater group which began producing shakespearean plays in bengali primarily for the bengali middle class audience he toured the villages of bengal with the bengali translation of macbeth presented with the bold rituals of native jatra thereby using a bengali folk theater form that can easily reach out to the rustic audience of bengal that had a firm conviction that the classics were not the prerogative of the elite they would cease to exist unless they were brought to the people he was interested in using shakespeare for drastic social change in his book shakespeare in samaj chinta shakespeare's social thought he refused to regard shakespeare as an exceptional mastermind but rather a social being implanted in a larger cultural and social context the shakespeare productions in bengali of the little theater group included the merchant of venice 1953 Macbeth 1954, Julius Caesar 1957, Romeo and Juliet 1964, A Midsummer Night's Dream 1964. This paper, as I told you just now, uh, focuses on two films that center on Shakespearean theatre productions in India. Shakespeare Wala, as I told you, which is a is a James Highbury film released in 1965, and the last year. which is a 2007 ritu porno ghosh film shakespeare wala is based on the real life experiences of geoffrey kendall family gathered during their visits to different parts of india with their traveling theater company shakespeare riana shakespeare riana uh, the kendalls made two trips to india in the post independence era the first in the year 1947-48 and the second span between 1953 and 1956 during these two trips they had 879 performances of shakespeare's plays and other english classics but they never pushed their boundaries beyond western culture um and they performed in english for the educated indians The film portrays the tension that builds up between the native Indian culture 
as upheld by the newly arrived popular genre of films and the declining fortunes of the receding colonial culture represented by the bard and the English productions of his plays in post-colonial India. The last clear uh, orbits around Harish Mishra, a retired Shakespearean actor, passionately dedicated to theatre and harboring a strong repulsion against technologies of artificial reproduction as used in films. Ghosh bases the film on Utpal Dutt's play Achke Shajahan, which happens to be a valiant tribute to Bengali theatre, a veritable archive of lost plays of the Bengali stage and its role in nationalist history. It centers on Kunjo Bihari, an old theatre actor who spends his time relieving and reciting scenes from old plays, surrounded by old theatre props. He is offered a role uh, of a clown in a film. Kunjo, intensely skeptical of movies, takes up the role, primarily to use the money that he, he would earn to build a theatre archive. The techniques of commercial filmmaking depress Kunjo, and his attempt to adopt the honest and transparent theatrical techniques of acting lead to his tragic death. Harry in the last year regards cinema to be a collection of incomplete moments. As he says, I quote, when you can see the face, you can't see the hand. Film to him is a director's medium where the actor or the audience have no say. Cut, as he says, is a film director's word. Tension erupts between him and the young director and Harry refuses to allow a stuntman to replace him in the final scene of falling off a cliff. He thereby gives his life trying and succeeding in implanting the irreproducible, unrepeatable, unique quality of live theatrical performance on cinematic art. The Kendalls were not quite happy uh, with the way they were presented in Shakespeare Walla. Uh, Kendall's diary was written in 1947 and the film was made 18 years later. The director himself had admitted that the film's making, I quote, was sometimes distasteful for the older Kendall's, especially in the beginning. Uh, it was too close to their own experience for comfort, yet far enough away to seem to them at times a kind of lie. The premise of the film appeared to them a negation of everything that worked for so long. Uh, the English residents of Bombay and Calcutta imported Shakespeare to India as early as 1775. This modern English style theatre served as a model for Proshanna Kumar Tagore's Hindu theatre which opened in 1831 with scenes from Julius Caesar. In 1835, British legislation introduced Western education into India. Since the country could not be ruled unless the ruler could communicate with his subjects, schools and colleges were set up in which English was the medium of instruction. The teaching of English was calculated to impress upon the natives the superiority of the master race so crucial to empire building. It was designed to produce a class of people who according to historian Thomas Babington Bakerley would be Indian in blood and colour but English in taste, in opinions, in morals and in intellect. Shakespeare's plays became an essential part of the government funded English education in India and school performances of Shakespeare were encouraged. In 1848, Barry Lewis's Othello, staged in San Sosi Theatre in Calcutta with Mrs. Anderson as Desdemona and the unpainted Hindu Othello, uh, Vaishnav Charan Oddi, with an unusually good pronunciation of English, received a mixed response from the English reviewers. In 1893, 
A version of Macbeth in Calcutta was designed by European artists but performed by Bengali actors. The Englishman newspaper reported that, I quote, a Bengali thane of Koda is a living incongruity but the reality is an astonishing reproduction. A definite change was noticed from the 1850s that saw the appearances of translations and interesting experimental local adaptations and deliberate uh, indigenization of Shakespeare proved to be far more popular than translations that blindly clung to the original. Indianized Shakespeare ruled the Bengali and Parsi theatres of this period. Madhusudan Dattu's play uh, Shormishta, 1858, based on As You Like It, uh, the Hindi translation of the Comedy of Errors by Munshi Ratanchan in 1882, the adaptation of As You Like It uh, to the genre of uh, Yakashagana, it was called Yakashagana in 1860, uh, the Tempest as uh, Marathi Sangeet Natak and so on. The process of indigenization of Shakespeare was even more uh, you know conscious and meticulous 1947 onwards. The Bombay cinema of the 1930s also helped to relate Shakespeare with popular culture. You know films that grafted uh, fragments of Shakespearean conventions, dialogues and scenes to native stories. However, there were also directors like Kishore Sahu, whose 1954 film production of Hamlet uh, was a shot by shot imitation of Lawrence Oliver's 1948 film version of the play. Regarding Shakespeare Walla and the Kendalls, Dennis Kennedy makes an interesting comment. He regards Geoffrey Kendall as the best example of colonial Shakespeare in the post-colonial period. I quote. Together with his wife Laura Little, Kendall formed a troupe of chiefly British actors called Shakespeare Rihanna uh, that crisscrossed India from 1946 to the early 1960s, playing in theatres, grand houses, before school children, merchants and maharajas, the last imperial viceroy and the first Indian prime minister. Kendall's was a British export product. Since there was little of India in his Shakespeare, it could survive in its colonial clothes after independence in 1947. He thought Indian audiences were best in the world, but he constructed them a bit like children, willing receptors of a culture inherently worth knowing and a dramatist unquestioned in his instructive authority. Coming back to the big uh, there were many other traveling companies from Europe with, who had set the tradition of presenting the Imperial Shakespeare in India. Her bandman's troupe came to Calcutta in 1882. Charles Allen in 1909. Uh, Matheson Lang in 1911-12. Allen Weekly in 1912. Harding and Howitt in 1918, Norman Marshall who travelled India in 1948 with Shakespeare theatre performances like the Kendalls, performed for an elite audience who were not only familiar with Shakespearean texts but as he said had eventually developed a very real appreciation of him as a poet and dramatist. But even this section of the Indian audience was losing interest in original, untouched Shakespearean plays. Shakespeare Walla, much to the dismay of the Kendalls, uh, who are named Buckinghams in the film, exposes this reality, the hegemonic conditioning of the urban audience 
was gradually waning away under the dying influence of the Raj. The Maharaja in the film who invites the Buckinghams to perform is one such vestige of the receding colonial educated elite who is a real enthusiast of pure Shakespeare, not the meddled native adaptations of the bard. He resembles Hamlet when he welcomes the players and exhibits his potential as an actor uh, while he has his lunch with them. Now, in the post-independence era, half his palace has been turned into offices. Tony Buckingham recites from Richard II to acknowledge this loss. Let us sit upon the ground and tell the sad stories of the death of kings. They perform Antony and Cleopatra for the Maharaja. The recurrent motif of loss stands out in the snippets of the play shown in the film. Cleopatra, uh, Cleopatra's lines in Antony's death scene are particularly significant. Oh, withered is the garland of the war. The soldier's pole is fallen. Young boys and girls are level now with men. The odds is gone and there is nothing left remarkable beneath the visiting moon. While the Maharaja represents the dying glory of British colonial power and stands out as a product of British cultural imperialism with British tastes and values, Sanju represents the young moneyed class of post-colonial India. Someone remembering the names of a few Shakespearean plays and maybe a few disconnected snatches of oft-quoted lines. He is close to Manjula, the glamorous film actress and prefers to skip a performance by the Buckinghams just to attend a film rehearsal. However, the equation changes once he is attracted to Lizzie Buckingham and this attraction extends to his appreciation for the troupe's performance of Shakespeare. The physical marginalization of theatre by film occurs at least twice. Once when the scenes showing the film rehearsal uh, intersperse the ones focusing on one of the stage performances of the Buckinghams and next when Manjula arrives late with her servant and a photographer to watch the Buckinghams perform Othello on stage and almost forces the audience to note her presence. Tony Buckingham playing Othello almost struggles to hold the attention of the audience and at one point has to admonish it by stopping his performance to maintain silence in the hall. The audience is magnetically attracted towards Manjula, running for her autograph. Manjula on the other hand finds the ambience suffocating, the outfits filthy and outdated and the script performance repulsive. Sanju trapped between Lizzie and Manjula metaphorically represents the young post-colonial India standing at crossroads between the nostalgia of the imperial past and the present revival of Indian identity by focusing on Indian traditions and notions of freedom and independence retaining at the same time the vestiges of the colonial culture. The formal meeting with Lizzie uh, that she arranges over tea, the western gadgets in her washroom and her general living style are all indicative of her Anglican, you know, uh, dances uh, round trees wearing Ghagra Choli and uh, the way she uh, memorizes uh, hackneyed dialogue 
in the native language. The past has an attraction of its own. One cannot deny its dignity, uh, weight and sophistication. While this transitional hybrid culture uh, appears flashy, loud, inconsistent and insubstantial at times, despite its strong nationalistic impulse. Disruptions in theatre performances continue as the Buckinghams are heckled by the viewers. Even the convent schools show more interest in cricket than in Shakespeare performances. The troupe begins uh, to feel the economic constraints as their demand steadily declines. Tony realizes that they are no longer blessed with the wonderful audience of the olden times who knew exactly where to laugh and where to cry. We should have gone home in 47 when the others did, he laments. Mrs. Bowen, the landlady of the depressing Glen Eagles Hotel, has a remarkable opinion. She says, it's not like the old days. What do these people know about our theatre? The Buckinghams consider England to be their home and Shakespeare as their property and hence the conflict. The film ends with Indian India born Lizzie boarding a ship that will take her to a so-called home, England, a place where she has never been before while her parents stay back with a troop depleted by Lizzie's departure and the death of a member. Young England carries back home the legacy of pure Shakespeare that is no longer appreciated in this newly liberated nation. While Harry in the last year clearly voices his disdain for motion picture and the conflict between movies and theatre becomes the pivot on which the film rests. Ghosh's attempt to reincarnate the colonial past through Harry's nostalgic renditions of Shakespeare in its purest form, regarded uh, as the ultimate source of lasting worth, creates a definite chronological problem. Even this film is haunted by a sense of loss and the associated nostalgia that was essential in Shakespeare Waller, loss of heroism and grandeur exemplified by Shakespearean theatrical culture which in this film is effectively associated with elite art and with an imperial past. Utpal Dutt had brought, out, brought about a localization of Shakespeare through the revisioning and rereading of the Bard's literary outputs. Ghosh has based the film on Dutt's play but has failed to pay him a proper tribute by re-canonizing Shakespeare. Unjo in the play laments the loss of popularity of vernacular plays primarily because uh, you know of the invasion of the cinematic medium. The setback confronted by the Kendalls was therefore different in nature from the one faced by Kunjo. There was no dearth of playgoers in the 1940s and 50s despite the rising popularity of cinema. The young generation of a newly liberated nation was extremely impatient of the cultural imperialism of the colonial masters. Hence, they were more interested in rereading, revisioning and thereby adapting uh, the canons to native tastes. Rigid impositions were being effaced by a flexibility of approach that was far more accommodative and hence acceptable to the new generation. Utpal Dutt had a perfect feel of the public pulse. 
and hence came up with his experimentations that proved to be extremely successful. Harish of the last year lives in Kolkata and represents the Kolkata theatre of the 1960s and 70s, considered to be the golden era of Shakespearean adaptations. Like the Kendalls, Harry, an uncompromising actor who dies uttering lines from King Lear, uses Shakespearean texts to interpret and present his predicament and his general state of affairs, but remains rigidly and adamantly loyal to the canon and is clearly impatient of any experimentation. Both the films speak of marginalization of theatre, but the reasons are a bit different. One understood and well expressed and the other misinterpreted and therefore misrepresented. Ironically, in both the cases, films and film actors are used to voice a cause that concerns the theatre and its essential variance with the cinema. This perhaps is indicative of an alliance. Technology aiding the natural performative forms and films becoming recreations of theatrical power. Uh, many members of my young audience may not be familiar with Shakespeare Walla but I believe you will be getting this film in the YouTube and uh, please watch this beautiful film and I, I, I feel you all know about uh, the last year and I think that is also available online now. So I hope uh, you have enjoyed this session. Thank you so much for your patience. See you soon.